Greetings dear aspirants welcome to today's current affairs session on civil superior today we'll be discussing about know my india program and about the components of national education mission under our prelims topic and about the importance to uh, achieve uh, debt consolidation in order to achieve the fiscal consolidation and about vision 2030 under our mains topic so let's move on to our first prelims topic of the day know my india program so under this topic you need to know something about the program who organizes the program and what is the objective of this particular program and something about the organizer who organizes this know my india program so this know my india program is being organized by the national foundation for communal harmony so this particular organization is an autonomous organization which works under the ministry of home affairs so the, about this uh, particular organization it will provide assistance to those uh, uh, ch children who have been victims of societal violence so there are different kinds of violence for example your terrorist violence violence caused because of caste conflicts your tribal conflicts or ethnic conflicts etc so it will promote communal harmony and national integration either it will work independently or it will work in collaboration with the state government or the in uh, ngos and it also provides awards to those individuals or organization who are working towards promoting the national integration and communal harmony and also it does uh, research studies on these two topics so about this particular uh, know my india program so this know my india program is uh, for those rehabilitated kids uh, in the age group of 15 to 22 years so they'll be brought under one platform and they'll be taught about the national integration by means of knowing about the uh, different cultures of uh, different kids who have assembled from the different states so this is all about the know my india program that you need to know from prelims point of view so this particular program is different from your uh, very famous know india program uh which is under the ministry of external affairs so easily you can get confused so please uh read it very carefully so let's move on to our uh, next topic the different components of national education mission so this national education mission was not announced anywhere by the central government but it can be seen in the budget document so the la last year this particular term was introduced national education mission under which there were four components uh, these four components are the sarva shiksha abhiyan rashtriya madhyamik shiksha abhiyan and your teacher training on adult education and the fourth uh, component is the rashtriya uchchatar shiksha abhiyan so this year it has been reduced into three components and we'll see uh, about that thing in the later slide so you need to know about the budgetary allocation to this particular national education mission so the previous year it was around 32300 crores and this year it is around 38572 crores so there is almost a 19.29% increase over the revised estimate of the previous year and component wise if you see Uh, around 36300 crores has been allocated to this samagra shiksha component so this samagra shiksha component basically is a uh, three first one the sarva shiksha abhiyan the rashtriya madhyamik uh, shiksha abhiyan and uh, a sub component under this particular teacher training and adult education all these three comes under the samagra shiksha abhiyan and uh, for uh, the rest of the components it's 150 crore and for the rashtriya uchchatar shiksha abhiyan it is 2100 crore so this interim budget has largely focused uh, towards uh, the uh, uh, children's education at the lower level and at the secondary level so your education has three levels one is a primary level middle level and the higher secondary level so uh, the sarva shiksha abhiyan is for uh, those uh, children under your primary education level working towards uni uh, universalization of your elementary education if you see this pade bharat bade bharat is also coming under this particular scheme and your rashtriya madhyamik shiksha abhiyan is for those uh, children under secondary education or the middle level education and the third component was the teacher training so uh, this particular strengthening of teachers training institution comes under this samagra shiksha abhiyan as a component and uh, under this teacher training uh, some budget has been uh, also has been allocated to this sakshar uh, bharat which means literate bharat sakshar is literate and padna likhna is to read and right and of your uh, also if you see sarva shiksha is education is for all education for all for all shiksha is your education madhyamik is middle level and uchchatar is higher level or the higher secondary level education and uh, under this teacher training you also have appointment of uh, language teachers and your school uh, assessment program don't remember this just remember the basic uh, 
uh, four topics under uh, which are which forms the components of your national education mission so let's uh, move on to our main topic of the day a uh, debt uh, consolidation so uh, you need to uh, manage uh, your debts properly in order to achieve your overall fiscal consolidation so this is the topic for the day so under this topic i intend to discuss about uh, the different uh, terminologies that is used towards uh, working debt management and what is india's present status and i'll be discussing the debt management strategy that has been brought in by the indian government for the year 2018 to 21 so uh, let's go with the terminologies so you need to know what is fiscal deficit so fiscal deficit is a deficit or uh, the reduction in money which arises because uh, when expenditure is more than your revenue so uh, revenue is uh, through your uh, it can be either through taxes or non taxes when your expenditure expenditure is uh, when you are uh, spending the government spending towards social sector schemes or towards raising infrastructure so this will all form your basic expenditure so when your expenditure amount uh, is more than your revenue amount then it forms the fiscal deficit and uh, then the government will come up with the consolidation measures those uh, consolidation measures are nothing but those measures a uh, policy measures taken by the government in order to contain this fiscal de deficit to some target so under your frbm act of 2003 your fiscal de deficit target is 3 percentage and we'll see uh, the evolution of your frbm uh, act in our later slides so this is all you need to know about the uh, fiscal deficit and you also know uh, need to know about the debt so debt is nothing but the outstanding liabilities of the government and the fiscal deficit is nothing but the new borrowings that is being made by the government every year and your revenue deficit is what part of these borrowings that has been used to cover your revenue related expenses so in order to collect revenue there will be some expenses made by borne by the government so it will take some money from this uh, borrowed money so uh, this is the revenue deficit and uh, with uh, regards to the present status of debt by the indian government so uh, this has come up in your uh, status paper on uh, debt management which has been released by uh, the directorate of economic affairs under your finance ministry so as per march 2018 in terms of gdp our uh, internal debt is 93 percentage and our external debt is 3 percentage so here our uh, internal debt is very much higher than the external debt which is an healthy factor and uh, the second thing uh, here is the internal debt is classified into two the total marketable debts and total non marketable debts here uh, the total uh, marketable debt debts is about 86% of the total internal debt which comprises of your dated securities and treasury bills and uh, your total non marketable debts contains uh, treasury bills which are uh, intermediate treasury bills and your securities against small savings etc so this comprises about 14 percentage and also if you see in the economy these uh, treasury bills or the dated securities have a fixed interest rates so uh, we are not our uh, economy is not uh, very much susceptible to the uh, external markets so uh, the floating interest rate uh, comprises only 1.8 percentage of the total debts so re rest everything is your fixed interest rates which is around uh, 99 98 percentage approximately and uh, you need to know about the new frbm framework as i told when frbm act was introduced in the year uh, 2003 uh, they came up with a target of uh, reducing your fiscal deficit to 3% by 2008 9 uh, years and uh, to uh, your rev revenue deficit to zero but uh, there has been changes made to this uh, amendments made to this particular uh, frbm act or some policy uh, decisions that has been taken by the then governments at those point of time so the latest is uh, the addition to this uh, frbm framework of 2018 19 made in the year 2018 19 so it uh, discusses largely about fiscal deficit and the debt so in the fiscal deficit component it aims to achieve 3 percentage of fiscal deficit of gdp by the year 2020 21 and uh, by what means is at least 0.1 percentage or more increase every financial year so last year it was introduced so this year it is supposed to reduce 0.1 percentage but it has not reduced so so if you see last year the data was uh, 3.3 
and the revised estimate the government put up a data of 3.4 percentage fiscal deficit and this year also it has maintained at the range of 3.4 percentage fiscal deficit and now uh, around 80,000 crores uh, of Indian national rupees will be incurred because of this uh, fiscal deficit out of which this 75,000 crore will go towards the social sector schemes or the populist schemes that has been announced by the present government in the interim budget so basically 75,000 crore for your PM Kisan scheme. So it will lead to some sort of fiscal slippage. So this fiscal slippage is because of the social sector spending, nothing but spending towards social sector schemes. And uh, here the expenditure needs to be expedited in terms of borrowings or revenue. So uh, whatever expenditure that India needs to do, the central government needs to do, it can only do so by either borrowing the money or towards uh, getting more amount of revenue. So your revenue can be either tax revenue or non-tax revenue. So there was a structural reform before 2-3 years in the form of GST and now it is getting some amount of uh, tax revenue which is increasing year on year. But uh, in terms of non-tax revenue, uh, the government is targeting largely towards uh, disinvestments. But, and even those disinvestment targets by the, the government are not properly met in the recent years and in terms of borrowings now uh, whatever we are discussing our debt management is in terms of borrowings but uh, India is uh, at a healthier uh, position compared to other developing countries and developed countries of the world where our uh, debt to GDP ratio is very much uh, lesser uh, than uh, the percentage of uh, GDP so it is very much less compared to those nations so that's why uh, there is major financial uh, crisis in countries like Venezuela and also debt crisis in your uh, countries of Greece, Italy etc. So uh, this is all about the fiscal deficit target that has been set by the government. So the second component is the debt component. So here uh, the central government has taken uh, the recommendations of the NK Singh committee which uh, was released uh, in the uh, year 2017 April month. So it has taken a uh, recommendation of that particular NK Singh committee. So it has spoken there in that committee uh, report is to reduce the central government debt to 40% of GDP by the year 2024-25 and uh, the central government debt to uh, 60, general government uh, debt to 60 percentage. So general government is which includes both your central government and your state governments. So 40% for the central government and 20% for the state government. So this is the target set up by the government for itself uh, which has to be achieved by the year 2024-25. If you see the debt to GDP ratio of the previous uh, 5 years, so it has uh, largely reduced uh, for the central government. So 47.5 to 47.1 to 47.4 then it reduced to 45.9 and again it increased uh, to some extent to 46.5 so this increases because of those money pumped in by the central government towards recapitalization of the banks so if you negate that it will it is like more or less the center is working towards achieving its goal but if you see in the case of states the overall debt to gdp ratio is increasing year on year which means the states are not maintaining a very healthy uh, uh, debt targets so uh, this is the uh, state uh, data taken for the previous five years and just uh, have it in mind. So this uh, has been published in the status paper on government debt by the Department of Economic Affairs under your finance ministry. So this will be useful for your uh, mains uh, as well. So this status uh, paper on uh, government debt has come up with this medium term debt management strategy. So this was introduced in the year 2015 for a period of three years, 15 to 18. So this is the second strategy document released uh, by the government. So this uh, strategy for 2018-21 is based on three pillars to uh, focus on low cost of uh, borrowing to mitigate the risks and to develop the markets, the security markets. And uh, as a part of this particular debt management strategy, your external debts and small savings schemes has also been uh, included under this debt management strategy ambit. And uh, uh, it is uh, also said by uh, the International Monetary Foundation in its World Economic Outlook that India will have a stable growth in the years to come. So stable and higher growth along with low inflation. So this would be favorable for India's fiscal prudence and debt consolidation. That's why in the interim budget, uh, the finance minister, Mr. Piyush Goel, told that uh, we'll focus largely on debt consolidation after ending this uh, fiscal consolidation. So uh, the three pillars, so I intend to discuss uh, three pillars uh, in detail. So this will be helpful for your mains. So here, uh, 
first is, is the low cost of borrowing so the government intends to borrow uh, in uh, on low cost by developing the proper government securities uh, market so how it will develop uh, by properly uh, estimating the demands so the government will add year on year demand uh, to borrow some amount of money uh, so from the uh, indian investor so your internal uh, debt is large so internal debt is because of uh, those uh, investors who are invested in these government securities so they form the source of money for the government uh, which the government borrows so this uh, demand has to be properly planned by the government so already this uh, government has come up with your half yearly demand uh, estimation so it is working perfectly and uh, it is uh, also brought in transparency to the entire system so this uh, sharing of information about uh, market, uh, market borrowings has improved the transparency of debt management operations. So the government intends to continue this and also the government will plan on uh, planned issuances and uh, the investment preferences of the investors will be taken care by the government how the government will engage with these investors uh, so uh, they are uh, the banks basically the banks uh, or uh, some other investors who uh, invest on these borrowings or the government security so they'll have a uh, proper communication channels with them so to elongate the maturity period in order to reduce the roll over risk so you need to know that uh, for government securities they'll mostly be uh, long term so for seven years or ten years and uh, some uh, GSEX are also in short terms. So uh, there will be a rollover risk. So this uh, rollover risk is basically uh, a risk associated with your debt refinancing. So when uh, a, a debt which is about to be matured uh, will be uh, rolled over into a new debt. So it will have some risk associated with it. So this is called the rollover risk. So this can be overcome when the maturity period is uh, very high say for 10 years 14 years etc so uh, this is what uh, this point intends to say to elongate the maturity period in order to overcome the uh, rollover risks so uh, and also it will focus on the risk mitigation so this debt portfolio exposed to risk needs to be monitored and managed so all these risks will be taken into account first one is the rollover risks second is the rate risk uh, the risks because uh, arising out of your uh, currency or exchange rates and uh, risks uh, associated with the interest rates for us it is very less around 1.8 percentage only which we discussed so this will not affect to a major uh, extent and your uh, sudden stop risks so the sudden stop is uh, nothing but the sudden uh, stoppage in the demand so every year there will be a demand for the government to borrow the money but what if what if it suddenly stops so this is the risk associated with the debt uh, portfolio so uh, the government has come up with some plans to manage or mitigate this risk so one thing is the investor relations so this uh, will be properly improved through regular consultations uh, investor consultation so they'll have meeting with the investors in order to know their expectations and the government will take measures towards implementing their expectations and uh, the government wants to develop this particular uh, gsec market so uh, it aims for a well-developed GSEC market which would price the debt very efficiently. If you see in the previous year 2018-19 it came up with a, a 2 and 5 year securities in order to bring a balance to this debt portfolio management. And uh, also there is a larger amount of liquidity in your GSEC market. Nothing but uh, the uh, smoothness in the transactions between the government and the investors. But uh, for the previous two years it was a bit stressed. So the government needs uh, intends to focus on this stress. To in order to improve the liquidity in the GSEC market. This again will be uh, ensured only with improved investor re uh, relations. And uh, the government also intends to diversify this uh, institutional investor base. So uh, right now it is only those uh, scheduled commercial banks, larger banks of India. Now um, the cooperative banks, your uh, ru regional rural banks and your non-banking uh, financial institutions and also your pension funds and mutual funds are also uh, are becoming a part of this institutional investor base. Thereby the government wants to uh, diversify this particular base and also uh, it wants to uh, very uh, carefully calibrate its approach towards opening the market for foreign and uh, retail investors because uh, there will be some implications when it when it's being open to your foreign investors but the government will take a very careful uh, step towards that and the government will actively consolidate through buybacks or your loan switches or your loan convers conversions for your effective liability management so liability is nothing but your debt your debt is a liability for 
efficient debt management the government will consider all this so this uh, all these three are forms the pillars of your status paper on government debt so uh, the central government has given a status paper on government debt to manage those debt uh, or uh, debts uh, that are arises for the central government largely for the central government if you see uh, for the state governments the encasing committee recommended that each state government should have its uh, own uh, trajectory your debt trajectory so that it will be easy for the center to track uh, the debts of the individual states in a individual manner but this has not been considered by the uh, central government hence you can see in this debt to gdp ratio that the the debt to gdp ratio of the states is keep on increasing so the central government is not taking any concrete measures towards that because it also needs uh, the uh, states involvement uh, in this uh, uh, collaboration or cooperation in this so this has to be taken care by the central government so this uh, status paper largely focuses for the central government debts but not for the state government debts so in these lines you can give your suggestions when a question comes on managing your uh, debt uh, very uh, effectively with this we are moving on to our next topic vision 2030 so this vision was announced by uh, the finance minister in his interim budget statement so uh, yes uh, mention some 10 dimensions towards achieving this vision 2030 so let us see those 10 dimensions first one is the physical and social infrastructure second one is uh, uh, promoting digital india third is clean and green india fourth is uh, uh, rural industrialization and fifth is uh, clean rivers sixth is oceans and coastline and seventh focus on space and eighth is uh, dimension is your uh, folk uh, self sufficiency in food production and ninth dimension is your health and the tenth dimension is minimum common but maximum governance so uh, let us see these different dimensions in details uh, to what uh, the government has uh, elaborated on so uh, under your physical and social infrastructure which is your first dimension the government intends to build the next generation infrastructure which includes your roads rails seas air and also your urban transport gas and electric transmission and also with a uh, focus on inland water ways under your social infrastructure the government aims a uh, house for every family so every family will have its own roof and it will live, live in a clean healthy and a wholesome environment so the government aims to build a quality science oriented educational system with institutes of excellence for providing a uh, top level leadership to all those private companies and also to the government in the long run along with uh, providing homes to the uh, every family in the country and uh, the second dimension is your digital india component so the digital infrastructure and the digital economy of 2030 will be built upon the success achieved uh, because of uh, introducing the digital india from the year 2000 14 so the india's youth will lead this endeavor in numerable startups by creating digital india plus some a million jobs so this was the goal uh, or the vision document under the digital india so the third dimension is your clean and green india so clean and green india is uh, achieving towards uh, blue skies or clear skies which is free of pollution and also your land which is free of pollution so it aims to ensure energy security plus reduced imports so energy security can be done only when india is focusing on your renewables so india's plan of switching over to renewables thereby reducing the dependence of fossil fuels so once the dependence of fossil fuels is reduced your imports will also reduce so in order to uh, enhance this renewables the government will largely focus towards transport revolution by introducing your electric vehicles and your energy storage devices in order to operate these electric vehicles and renewables will become a major source of energy supply so the fourth component is the rural industrialization which means uh, developing uh, villages as rural industrialized clusters so in order to generate mass employment through rural uh, industrialization so this will build upon this uh, make in india approach whereby the villages will become clusters of production already india is known to be a manufacturing hub in certain sectors so india will build up on this and the fifth dimension is the clean rivers so this uh, government has taken a uh, large interest towards cleaning the river ganga uh, st- uh, once this government came into being it started with this uh, clean ganga uh, mission so in lines of that india wants to clean all the uh, rest of the rivers as well and it also aims to provide safe drinking water to all indians to have a proper nourishing life and it also aims to efficiently use the water by introducing the micro irrigation techniques in agriculture 
So the sixth component is the oceans and the coastline. As we all know, India has a very a huge coastline. So this coastlines will bolster the blue economy, nothing but uh, towards uh, the fisheries. And uh, efforts in Sagar Mala program, nothing but your ports uh, development program will be scaled up in order to achieve this uh, vision. And the inland uh, waterways will also be uh, fastly developed. So if you see the first under our first component physical and social infrastructure, there was a, a need for developing the inland waterways along with that this uh, dimension uh, of vision 2013 will also be taken along with. And India also aims at outer skies because India is one of those countries which is uh, leading in space related research activities. And India is uh, now working on Gaganyaan mission, the manned space mission. So it will send an India as Indian astronaut to space uh, by the year 2022. So India aims to become a launch, launch pad of uh, satellites in the world. So this was put up by the government. And uh, the eighth dimension of vision 2030 is self-sufficiency uh, in uh, food production in order to achieve self-sufficiency and also to produce food in the most organic way. So this uh, for achieving this uh, the technology uh, in uh, the technology innovations that have been introduced in the field of agriculture would be taken up. So high farm production and productivity will be achieved through your modern agriculture production and value addition. And uh, a very integrated approach will be given by the government towards the entire agriculture and the food processing sector. So it is not that agriculture is separate, food processing is separate, but an integrated approach to both the sectors. Starting from preservation, packaging, your maintenance of cold chain, everything is the focus of this uh, government under this eighth dimension. And your ninth dimension is health. So uh, a lot has been discussed about health and uh, the, in the present government has also come up with the Ayushman Bharat program. So it largely focuses on building up the necessary health infrastructure with a distress free healthcare and a functional and a comprehensive wellness system. So uh, this will be built upon and uh, participation of women also will be taken care along uh, with uh, this Ayushman Bharat scheme. And uh, your 10th component is your minimum government, maximum governance. So uh, the, all these government employees will work uh, in cohesiveness with the, those present uh, governments at either at the center or, or at the state in order to achieve this uh, 10th dimension. So they will be uh, very proactive and they will be a responsible uh, bureaucracy and they will also be very friendly to people thereby achieving this minimum government, maximum uh, governance. So these are the 10 dimensions of uh, vision 2013 30 and I have uh, given this in a very nutshell so this will be easy for you to prepare for prelims uh, mains point of view with this we are winding up our uh, today's topic please do like comment and share the video and please subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy channel for latest videos and updates stay focused and motivated friends thank you